Hey everybody, today we're going to be discussing biofuels. We're going to be talking about what they are, as well as the economical, political, and ecological implications surrounding them. Biofuels are transportation fuels produced from biomass. These are materials derived from living or recently living organisms. And there are different levels or generations of biofuels. And it's important to note that different countries and organizations have varying definitions for these different generations of biofuels. But today we'll be generalizing them to three categories based on the research I've compiled. First generation biofuels are created from crops such as soybean, corn, sugarcane, canola, as well as vegetable oils and animal fats. Second generation biofuels are made from non-food crops and waste biomass such as corn stover, corn cobs, straw, wood, and wood byproducts. There are also third generation biofuels, sometimes called advanced biofuels, but we'll take a deeper dive into that category later on. Let's start with first generation biofuels. The crops from these are used to make bioalcohols such as butanol, propanol, and ethanol, whereas the oils and fats are used to make biodiesel. You know those friends you have that are just fueled by alcohol? Well, some cars work in a similar way. Biodiesel and bioalcohols are sometimes blended with diesel and gasoline to fuel your vehicle. These biofuels can also be used on their own and are generally cleaner burning than conventional fuels. Ethanol is the most common biofuel around. It's an alcohol made from the sugars of grains like corn and barley. You've probably seen it at your local gas station. It's mixed in with the fuel you put into your vehicle. In the US, around 97% of fuel contains some ethanol, and it's usually around 10%. This number varies from country to country. Brazil's fuel, for instance, contains up to 27% ethanol. The overall worldwide biofuel production has been steadily increasing over the last few decades, with North and South America accounting for the majority of the production. The US alone produces billions of gallons of biofuel per year. Ethanol in particular has increased production by about 900% over the last 20 years. With Miami becoming one of the largest consumers in recent years because of spring break, baby! Europe comes in third place when it comes to global biofuel production. The Renewable Energy Directive mandated that 20% of all energy usage in the EU, including 10% of road transportation fuel, come from renewable sources by 2020. And this of course includes biofuels, and they also address indirect land use change to reduce the destruction of forests or other natural resources when producing biofuels. The EU and India have also been in talks in recent years to collaborate together to promote and finance bioenergy projects and technologies, with some special emphasis on advanced biofuels. Which brings me back to that topic, third generation biofuels, or advanced biofuels, are those that are made from algae. Now these have a lot of potential benefits. For one, we wouldn't need to cut down forests or clear other ecosystems to reduce them, to potentially having net neutral carbon emissions. They also have the potential to produce a number of different fuels with a very high yield rate. Everything from biodiesel, ethanol, gasoline, to even jet fuel. Unfortunately, there are a few downsides. We have yet to produce them on a massive scale. And besides that, they need a lot of water, nitrogen, and phosphorus to grow. And of course, most tragically, we may run out of algae to produce sushi. You can take away my clean air and water, but don't touch my $50 roll of sushi. As of yet, there is no scientific consensus on whether biofuels will have an overall positive impact on the environment. Since biofuels are derived from living organisms, they can be replenished over time and produced indefinitely, unlike crude oil. This also means that they can be produced in the US, which would reduce our dependence on foreign oil. And like I mentioned previously, they may produce fewer greenhouse gases than conventional fuel. However, their emissions depend on how the crops used to make biofuels are cultivated and how the biofuels are produced, for several reasons. First off, the mass production and processing of biofuels still requires the use of fossil fuels. Secondly, it may be necessary to clear land to increase the amount of crops cultivated to produce the biofuels, which would not only destroy natural ecosystems, but would also release greenhouse gases by means of the destruction of plant life in addition to the use of vehicles and tools used to clear the land. If we wanted to avoid this, however, we would have to designate part of our current crop supply to reduce biofuels, which in turn raises another potential concern, which is that making fuel out of a crop typically reserved for food could impact the supply of that crop, potentially impacting food costs. 
Other potential drawbacks include an increased pressure on water resources, as well as air and water pollution. Lastly, another downside is the lack of infrastructure necessary for mass production in the US compared to the long established infrastructure we have for conventional fuel. My personal opinion is that biofuels should serve as a transitional fuel to be used while we progress to more energy efficient means. Evidence suggests that producing biofuels while maintaining our same level of production for conventional fuels will only exacerbate climate change and not have the desired effect of mitigating it. We either have to fully transition or wait until we are able to jump to cleaner energy sources down the line. I think that ideally we want to be able to produce biofuels from algae and obviously do it in the cleanest and most efficient way possible. Either that or we can maybe try to harness the power of spring breakers desire for alcohol and produce a self-fueling vehicle. Yeah, like that one. So whether biofuels have an overall positive impact or not depend on our actions as a society, as well as how we decide to use them. Despite this lack of consensus, production keeps increasing and the industry seems likely to continue its growth. By 2024, market value for biofuels is expected to increase by over 10%. According to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, various laws have been passed to provide funding for research and development of alternative fuels. The Energy Policy Act of 2005 and the EISA of 2007 used various economic incentives to boost the production and use of biofuels. The Renewable Fuel Standard too requires an increase in the amount of renewable fuel to be blended with regular fuel by 2022 to 36 billion gallons, up from 13 billion gallons in 2010. Even the US military is investing in new fuel alternatives and is trying to obtain 25% of its energy from alternative fuel sources by 2025. Of course, the military is doing everything in its power to prevent any potential sushi shortage. President Biden has approved $50 bajillion to go directly to aircraft carriers and drones to prevent the sushi catastrophe. Now on a serious note, I'll leave a link down below to the US Department of Energy's website that has all the state and federal laws, regulations, and incentives regarding biofuels and renewable energy. But from what I've gathered, the US has not put out any rules or laws specifically requiring a certain amount of its energy output be generated from biofuels the way Europe has. However, the market has not yet consolidated leaving plenty of room for growth and competition, with some of the big players on the scene being Abengoa Bioenergy, investing over 500 million on research and development, Poet LLC, investing at least 275 million, Renewable Energy Group Inc., and Archer Daniels Midland Company, who invested at least 820 million. Some US companies like Alginol and Algae Venture Systems are even trying their hand and making strides when it comes to advanced biofuels. Now, I'm jumping to the land of speculation here based on my ignorance, but with regards to advanced biofuels, perhaps someone could find a way to genetically modify the algae to have a uh, decent yield rate of fuel and a low nutrient requirement. Either way, since there still isn't a way to mass produce them, this means this economic sector is up for grabs. With the EU and India collaborating to incentivize the development of advanced biofuels and technologies, and the US having its own incentive, there's a lot of potential economic opportunity for the person or the startup that can find a way to do just that. And who knows, perhaps a startup in LA will take on this challenge.